Well, good morning and God bless you. It's so great to take another moment in the Word together with you today. And today, I'm going to speak about another woman. Another woman out of my book, Good Women in Bad Situations and the Grace that Awaits Them. And yes, while it seems shamelessly I'm promoting this book, it's because this book is promoting the message of the Word of God. This book. And it's important because you know what? The amazing message of God's grace is so important in these days and times with so many women who are pursuing to uh, fight for rights and self-worth and, and, and value because Christ has valued us. And it's so important. And I'm going to get into this uh, lesson very quickly that's coming from uh, the book of Joshua and the person that is coming from the book of Joshua. But let's pray first. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time that we can spend looking into your word, O oh God, to hear from you, O oh God, to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts, O oh God, and our spirits, O oh God, to show us great and wonderful things that we don't know even more about you, about the relationship that we can have with you, O oh Lord, and that there's the desire for you to have a relationship with us. We bless you, O Lord, and ask that if there's anyone viewing at this time, O Lord, who doesn't know you in the pardon of their sins, that you will draw them to you, O Lord, for no man can come except he be drawn. Let this word draw them, O God. Let the Holy Spirit draw them to you, to the merciful, loving God, kind Father that you are, O Lord that their eyes might be opened and their spiritual ears may hear what the Spirit is saying, O oh God, this morning, Lord. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you go with us in our going out and coming in. Be with us throughout this day. Cover us under your wings of protection, O oh God, and under the power of your shed blood, O oh God, that you will give grace, O oh God, to those who need it in the areas in which they need it most, Lord, and that you will draw all men unto you, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just have your way in our lives, and we shall give you all the glory and all the honor. It belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read very quickly uh, in the book of Joshua uh, this morning um, about a wonderful, wonderful uh, woman of faith that... Uh, we hear about, it is a great story about Rahab and uh, who she was, <laughs> what, what happened in her life, but what God, how God interacted with her and, and what it meant and what it means for us today. So in uh, the book of Joshua and the... Um, First, the second chapter, I'm going to read a few verses, starting at the first verse, and it reads, Then Joshua, the son of Nun, sent two men as spies secretly from Shittim, saying, Go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came into the house of a harlot whose name was Rahab and lodged there. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, Men from the sons of Israel have come here tonight to search out the land. And the king of Jericho sent word to Rahab saying, Bring out the men who have come to you, who have entered your house, for they have come to search out all the land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. And she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they were from. It came about when it was time to shut the gate at dark, that the men went out. I do not know where they went, but pursue them quickly, for you will overtake them. Then uh, jumping over to the 15th verse of the same chapter down, it says, Then she let them down by a rope through the window, for her house was on the city wall, so that she was living on a wall. She said to them, Go to the hill country, so that the pursuers will not happen upon you, and hide yourselves there for three days until the pursuers return. Then afterward you may go on your way. 
And the men, uh, she made the men swear to her a promise that when they came back to the city uh, to overtake it as... Uh, she had heard that they probably would uh, attempt to do, and that's why they were there to spy out the land. And the king heard about it and was so uh, distraught and wanted the men brought to them because he didn't want them to return with the information because they knew what was going to happen. And it was a defining moment for this harlot, this woman uh, who, who was single, who owned this place that they say was an inn, but it was nothing more than like a brothel <laughs> or a house of ill repute that travelers could come, stop in, uh, receive uh, sexual gratification and do whatever else that they wanted to do, drinks or whatever. However, they would uh, somewhat have their own partying going on there. Um, and no other language in Hebrew and both in Greek, Rahab is referred to as a harlot. And we know what a harlot, a harlot is like a prostitute or one who gives herself, you know, to various men for sexual gratification or favors. And we can't clean that up. The Bible says exactly what it is. And though this woman had this, terrible start in life as an innkeeper or uh, more than an innkeeper, <laughs> she also had a defining moment that was coming to her. Now in Jericho, nothing she did was wrong. It was all on the up and up. It was all legal. But in the eyes of God, it was so contrary and so far distant from the life that the Lord was calling for his people to live. And it was even so much so that the men of Israel stood out from everybody else in the town that, uh, that was there. Uh, and they were identifiable as men from Israel. And the word got back all the way back to the king. Um, so it, it just goes to show how God's people stand out <laughs> from even those of the world, how different they totally were, um, probably in their speech, maybe their language, their dress, their demeanor, everything was different, so much so that it stood out to the and the uh, word went back to the king. So at this time, it was important for Rahab to find, see these men. This was not just happenstance. This was not coincidence, but this was a planned divine providential moment of God. It was in God's divine providence that these spies would go to this place. And you know why? Because we would look at Rahab and judge her as one thing, but God knew her heart. And he knew that if those two men spies that were going to get the information that they needed and return safely back to where Joshua was, in Shittim, that this woman would be the key person in their lives who would save them. And certainly enough, it was that way because when they approached her and she heard about them, she said, listen, we heard about your God. We know about the people, the, the people of Israel and how God spared them and delivered them. Uh, you know, his name had gone, preceded him. They knew about the God of Israel and what he was mighty to do. In fact, they were scared and fearful hearing that they were coming their way because they knew what that meant. And so Rahab made the spies promise. Uh, she had saved them that they would remember her, that they would remember her family, her parents, her siblings, her brothers and other relatives. And they made a vow to her. They swore to her that if she would do as she let them out over the wall with the scarlet thread or fabric that was there down that wall and told them how to pursue to safety until it was clear for them to return back to Joshua, that if she would do uh, use that scarlet thread on the day that they entered the city to leave that outside the window, that would be the demarcation that no one was to touch anyone in that house, that they were not to be harmed, that they were to be delivered. Everyone in that house, if they stayed in that house, that they would be delivered. But if they entered out into the street that day, that broke the vow. They couldn't promise them safety. That reminds me of when the death angel was going to pass through Egypt on, on that evening, that they were to put blood on the doorpost and that the death angel would see the blood on the doorpost and pass over that house. Look at our God. 
Look at what he did for this woman who was a harlot, who who was a woman who of ill repute that most people would have turned from Israel, would have turned their faces from or their noses up, being the religious people that they were, just like we turn our noses up or look down on sometimes people who don't live the lifestyle that we live or don't dress the way that we uh, would want them to dress because where uh, Rahab came from, everything she did was fine. It was in order. It was legal. It was their custom. After all, she was a Canaanite. And the Canaanites lived uh, by the gods that they served were attached to the lifestyle. So the sexual uh, perversion, and that was part of their religious worship. Child sacrificing. There were so many things that were so contrary uh, in Israel, but so right in Jericho. But you know what? As long as she had been there and been raised up in that custom, she was ready for a change. And when she heard that the God of Israel was going to come to Jericho and she saw the two spies and spoke to them and she found that she could change, that there was an opportunity for her and she did not miss this opportunity. She took it because she put her own life on the line. She put herself at risk that hide the spies in her house when those soldiers came from the king to get the men out and she stirred them in another direction. Yes, she lied, but she's lied to protect the people of God. And I tell you, it saved not only their lives, but it saved her life. And this is what is important to know, that you know what? Even though this woman had a horrid past and lived a lifestyle contrary to God, it did not predict or dictate her ending. That her finish, her finish would be great, even if her past or her beginning was bad. And that is what I want to message out to you this morning is that, you know what, your past does not define your future. That just because you had a bad start, just because you didn't get off on the right foot, just because you weren't born into the right family, just because you were exposed to things that were detrimental and probably harmed or maybe hurt a portion of your life. The fact that you were still here means that God is not finished yet, that there is yet more for you and that you can't even predict yourself. You can't say it's over for me because I've been through this or I've done that because God is not finished with you yet and that there is an end that you could be trying to escape that's better than you could ever plan for yourself. Rahab would never have believed. And the Bible tells us, if we go over to um, Matthew tells us that because of this act of Rahab, because of this faith that she had, that she was actually in the bloodline for the coming of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And she was married to a prince by the name of Salmon, who was a prince from Israel. Now, you wouldn't think that out of all the women that this fine man from the people of God could have married, that this woman who came to faith in his God, he picked her, a woman who had been a harlot, a woman who had been with other men, a woman who had not lived uh, righteously all her life, but yet it qualified her to marry a prince from Israel. My God, look at what God does. No matter what your past may look like, no matter what it's sprinkled with, no matter uh, what you have done to make that change, to come to faith in the Lord God Almighty changes everything. And that's why you can't give up on yourself. You can't give up on others who haven't had a great start. Because you know what? That could be a setup for a grand finale, a grand finish. And I tell you, Rahab, the, the scriptures talk about it. Even in Hebrew, the 11th chapter and the uh, 31st verse, it says that, by faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish along with those who were disobedient. She was obedient to what she was put there to do. She did what God told her to do. And even James, the second chapter, the 24th and the 25th verse, speak about Rahab's faith uh, that proves, you know, her works prove her faith that by what she did, it showed that she had faith in the God of Israel and his people. And so she became in the bloodline of the Lord Jesus Christ that showed in Matthew, the first chapter and the fifth verse. 
My goodness, Rahab's courage and sacrifice demonstrate how a person may be in sin and not want to even stay there. And some circumstances throw a person into survival mode for the present situation. And so we want to uh, look not at the bigger picture, the position of the heart rather than the position of the harlot. Her occupation, you know, characterizes her as a no good woman. Uh, as even trash and not worthy of the best that life may have to offer by moralists and religious uh, people who are self-righteous or as they used to say, holier than now. But we see a woman's heart here that can be hidden until it's given the proper opportunity. And like Rahab, she was, God gave her the right opportunity and she made a decision and she was willing to put her life on the line for that decision. Because of her faith in that God, she believed what she heard about Israel's God. She believed about their deliverance from Exodus. And she believed that if she put her trust in him, that she could be saved too. And she spoke to the spies. She hid the spies and then let them out in the, under the cover of night and told them what to do, how to go and stay in the hills for three days until the pursuers return. And, and, and they got away and escaped and they told everyone, Joshua, what happened and told those that would go into that city, that this cord, that would, this scarlet cord that would be outside of the window of this woman's house that was attached to the wall, they knew exactly what that would mean. And that if anyone was to go in there and to harm them, that they themselves would even be put to death, that it was that serious, the oath and the vow that they made to her, that if she would be obedient, that they would be saved. My Lord, what divine providence that came into uh, Rahab's life, even though she was a harlot in that city, that she and her family, her parents, her brothers, her other relatives would be saved too. And you know what? That shows us a lesson that doesn't matter what your past is. doesn't matter what your family knows about you. It doesn't predict your future. And that you could be the least likely to succeed and be the one most likely to save everyone in your household. Because that's the kind of God that we have. That's why you can't give up on yourself. That's why you can't give up on others that may seemingly be uh, worse off in a position now, but you don't know what God is going to finish up in their lives. You don't know what it's going to take to turn them around. But I tell you, you, if you put your faith and trust in Jesus, he can make things right. Even though they may seem wrong, he can change the person's life and transform them. Your future looks better than you think it does right now. Everything could be against you. But if God be for you, he is more than the whole world against you. You know, a shameful past leaves most women with not only low self-esteem, but with self-condemnation and guilt. And these in turn make a woman believe that she doesn't deserve the best that life could offer. Only other women who, are, who have been what you would call perfect or righteous. But God shows us through this biblical account, how man looks on the outward appearance, but God knows the heart and what the heart's desire is. And he saw that in Rahab. And it was not coincidence. It was not by chance, but it was by God's divine providence that led the spies to Rahab, the harlot. And God was showing Rahab that there is another option. And you know what? There's another option for many people. I pray that if someone is watching this moment in the word this Monday, that you will know that there are other options. But the greatest option that you can pick is the Lord Jesus Christ to turn your life around, to strengthen your life. And you don't have to always be on the lower end of things. You don't have to be a harlot. You don't have to be a, a, a grand a sinner, you know, in order to be saved because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But you may be facing other things in life that you need a God on your side. And you know what? The Lord is there. He's willing to help you. He's willing to strengthen you. He's willing to take you through whatever you may be facing right now. And I pray that in this moment in the word Monday, that you will look to him, that you will look to Jesus 
for strength. You will look to him for life, that you will look to him for comfort, that you can look to him for companionship, and you certainly can look to him for deliverance and for salvation. For there is no salvation in other any other name other than the name of Jesus. So I pray on this moment in the word Monday that this lesson, that whatever your past has been, however you started out in life, maybe you didn't get the best start, maybe you had a very rough start in life, that that's not your end. That's not predicting what your future holds for you. Because just as Rahab had no idea that she would wind up married to a prince from Israel that and her family would be saved, that she would leave those practices, that lifestyle that she once lived and was used to, had become accustomed to, that she would change, that be able to live a better life. Oh, beloved, don't ever give up on life, as hard as it may seem, but you can turn to a God that can strengthen you and help you to get through and even flourish nearer to your future. So keep this word in your heart and even share it with others. And I pray that you will have a blessed day and a blessed week in the Lord. God bless you.